So I may have shared this rather odd economic fun fact with you previously, but over the past two years, OEMs like Ferrari, Lamborghini, McLaren have had their best sales years ever. In fact, in 2021, sports cars as a whole, not just fancy ones like this, increased their sales by 25%. Now that's all fine and good, but how does that impact you and I dealing with a deluge of EV baby buggy introductions over that same period? Well, it already did impact us. Remember the 765 LT Coupe that came out? It sold so well, even though it was limited production, they sold the one we were supposed to drive right out from under us. So when they announced one that was gonna be a Spider, we got in line way quicker, which means Take a wild guess what you and I are doing today. So you and I are going to kick off this episode at a bit of a disadvantage because I cannot show you the stunning 4-liter twin-turbocharged V8 that has been in the McLaren world for quite some time without ripping apart the ass end of the car. So suffice it to say that the engine resides somewhere here, the 7-speed dual clutch resides somewhere here. They work in conjunction with each other to drive nothing but the rear wheels. Uh, then there are two other attributes that go along for the ride. A flat plane crank. We talked about why that's important in the recent AMG GT Black Series episode. Go check that out. And then of course a dry sump lubrication system. Putting all of that together, 755 horsepower and 590 pound-feet of torque. Now before the car came, I couldn't help myself. I got some time to look on the internet. And I found folks putting these things on dynos, 750 horsepower to the wheels. I'm not saying the folks in Woking are lying, but something's up with that engine. Uh, then there's really what this thing is about, and it's light weighting, not the engine. This, I think the best way to understand it is assume everything is carbon fiber with the exception of the following the hood, the fenders, the outer door skins. And while we're at the doors, notice it's a single hinge in the spider, which aids the light weighting. Then we move to the back of the car, the rear quarter panels and a tonneau cover, that's all aluminum as well. Now this piece here, it's bespoke to the spider. This one is carbon fiber, but everything else we talked about, that's aluminum. However, we're going to have to put a pin in this part of the discussion because there's a way to even change some of those bits. We'll discuss that later in the episode. Then there's the performance figures, exactly what you'd expect. Zero to 60, 2.7 seconds, VMAX, 205 miles an hour. It may have been eons since you and I have driven a McLaren together, but wow, we are not only just making up for lost time, we are not going to complain about the mass. 3,060 pounds, or depending on how you express your weights and measures, 1,388 kilograms. If this were the hardtop LT, it would be only 108 pounds lighter with that. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, this! God, do I miss British engineering, Jesus Christ! Uh, I'm sorry, there's no way to describe it. It's instantaneous, a rear drive car with this kind of acceleration. And then there's the transmission. And here, this is something the McLaren does incredibly well. It is not tuned very well for driving around town, but man, when you push it very hard on roads like these, you understand what it's designed for. There's no limit, you can't downshift. And absolutely, I would argue you want to shift the gears. Okay, now you and I get to the point where we have a ridiculous amount to cover because I would argue these are all about what's underneath the vehicle and how it keeps it on the road. A recap there, it's double wishbones all the way around, but the very important point we need to get to is how does it work with the dampers? 
You know, a lot of cars you and I drive, we've driven the VET, it's got the magnetic ride control, we've driven Porsches, and yeah, they have hydraulic. But this, this is hydraulic to another level. What this thing does is it has reservoirs throughout the vehicle, and it does the same trick that those very, very heavy BMW and Mercedes SUVs do, where it's an active anti-roll system. But that does it either with a 48 volt mild hybrid system or ridiculously complex dampers at each corner. This is something entirely different. The reservoirs literally push the hydraulic either side to side or front to back. And this way the system can be a bit more efficient, but more importantly, much quicker in the way it responds to pushing the car around corners. It's instantaneous. This is arguably the closest thing to neutral handling you and I will have probably at these speeds. Yeah, we could argue that an Elise would also do the same thing, but there is no way on God's green earth you can get an Elise with any engine to do what this thing does. Then there's the structure of the vehicle. The thing is literally a tub. That's what I'm sitting in right now, made of carbon fiber. But where it gets away from the carbon fiber, the subframe in the front as well as the subframe in the back, that's aluminum. But then notice, this thing is, you can probably see it in the cameras, how stiff this car is. Well, that's a function of, yes, carbon fiber and the aluminum subframe front and rear. But also in the LT, it changes the engine mount. So it's not like a 992 where it has adjustable engine mounts. This is just one and it's ridiculously stiff and you can feel it in your intestines. And can I say, thank you, sir, may I have another? Now that does impact the ride quality a bit, which works in conjunction with the wheel sizes. It's staggered, 19s in the front, 20s in the rear. The car you and I are driving is fitted with a lightweight wheel, which drops an additional 50 pounds off the car. And notice they are diamond cut and they look magnificent. Uh, then there are the brakes, and this is something that is kind of new to us. Uh, yeah, carbon ceramic rotors, not exactly new, but what they've done here is 15.4 inch diameter rotors in the front, 15 in the back, six piston calipers in the front that are monoblock, and four piston calipers in the back. That you kind of expect for a car with this kind of power, right? Well, what you don't expect, there is an additional carbon ceramic option. God, does this thing sound amazing. There is an additional carbon ceramic option to upgrade the performance of the brakes as if this were not enough. Let's you and I get more realistic about that exhaust because the entire reason I brought it up was not to discuss the sound, rather the construction materials. That is titanium you're listening to, not aluminum. And the concept is, you guessed it, work with all the light weighting we talked about in the hangar. And then there's some of the dimensions that play into how this thing works. It's the same 105 inch wheelbase as a 720, which is what, nine inches longer than a 992 GT3. So that really doesn't change. The length of the car changes by about two inches, but much more importantly, the front track is wider, and then the ride height in the front comes down two tenths of an inch. But here's the thing that's masking that change, the steering itself. This is one of the very few cars left on the planet that's not named Lada that has hydraulic steering. You heard me right, hydraulic steering. I would argue this is a case study of what steering should be in vehicles like these, so much so that I would say this is an open letter. Wow, tumbleweed right in the middle of the road. Uh, open letter to the folks at Lamborghini, Porsche, whoever makes cars like these, when it's to this extreme level of a vehicle, and it's not cheap like a vehicle like this, can we have electro-hydraulic steering in those vehicles? Like 992 GT3s or STO, Udicons, that kind of stuff. It makes such a difference. The weight is about perfect. The feedback is about perfect. It's exactly what you'd expect in a vehicle. Oh, God, man. This is... I feel like I'm home again with this steering. It's that big of a difference. Thank you, Woking, for making this a reality. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game, Mind the Absence Game, with today's contestant, something we have not seen in a round of this game for a very long time, a McLaren. But before we press on to this round of the game, 
I do need to point out that the term bespoke, I believe it was invented in England, and if it wasn't, it still very much applies to this vehicle right here. With that 2022 McLaren 765 LT Spider for a base price of $382,500. Now, I do need to point out a couple of things. Number one, they are only going to make 765 of them, about a third are coming to the US. Now, there are some things fitted as standard, but two of those things are not air conditioning or a radio. Considering this is a track car, I'm not particularly mad about it. Then the rest of the stuff, we need to break it out into different buckets because there are so many things to get through. So let's start with the MSO options. That's like Porsche Exclusive Manufacture. In this case, it's all carbon fiber options. Now, yes, there's a lot of carbon fiber we already talked about because this is all about light weighting, but here's an opportunity to pay more for more light weighting. Like for example, the tonneau cover in the back, you want that carbon fiber? $9,090. The rear arrow brace, $8,240. Then we press on to something they call the fascia vent, $4,240. Then the upper trim, you want that carbon fiber? $6,790. The hood, in body color, carbon fiber, that's a bargain, it's $6,910. Then there's an exterior package number three in carbon fiber, I have no idea what this is, $4,860. But really, you need the carbon fiber exterior package number two, $22,340. Oddly, this car is not equipped with carbon fiber exterior package one, although again, I have no idea what that is. Then the carbon fiber diffuser, $9,410. I gotta say that one looks really cool. Then there is a front number plate, the option to have a front number plate mounted to the car in carbon fiber, $2,100. $20. But wait, there's still one more MSO option fitted to this McLaren, and that would be the secondary interior components, not to be confused with things like the surrounds of the window switches that are finished in carbon fiber, and one does not have to pay extra for those because that's all about light weighting. However, if you want secondary components finished in carbon fiber, that will cost you an additional $2,860. And we press on to more pedestrian options like the paint. Ambit Blue, it's called an elite color, and Santa Maria, Madre de Dios, one must see it in direct sunlight, absolutely stunning. I'd say it's worth the $5,430. Then the roof, this is the Spider. It comes with a carbon fiber roof panel. However, this one is the electrochromatic roof. So it's a glass panel. It does not have a sunshade. Instead, one presses a button and it changes the opacity. Very cool party trick, but very expensive. $9,090, the same price as the carbon fiber tonneau cover. Then the buy McLaren choice of suede interior. It's a combination of black, dark blue in the door panels, contrast stitch that's a lighter blue, and then a blue graphic pattern on the seats. That is an additional $3,030. Then we press on to the 10 spoke diamond cut wheels. $4,250. Then we press on to something you and I have never seen before, a counterproductive option. If you look at the interior of this vehicle, there's a lot of nets and open bins for storage, and the idea is lightweight. However, one can have a covered bin fitted for an additional $850, kind of a bargain to make it more secure, I guess. Then there are a number of other options fitted to this car, we do not have time to go through all of them individually. Let's clump them all together. Things like a car cover, a fire extinguisher. Although the fire extinguisher, it's not like 992s where they mount them to the front of the passenger seat. Instead, here it's in the front. A 360 degree round view camera, a warning triangle, first aid kit, a bunch of other stuff, which all adds up to $3,000. $390. The only other item we add is the destination and handling from Woking, England, $5,500, which brings us to the total retail price of $490,900.
And so we arrive at the point of the episode where we must tend to the 800 pound gorilla that has been staring us in the face, the aesthetics. Now I will fully admit, I have never been a huge fan of the way McLarens look. They just, they're too busy. They don't have a timeless look. They're not sensual like a 992, or believe it or not, some Lamborghinis, and I'm not a huge fan of the way Lamborghinis look. But then there's this. It's got very purposeful holes in it. And when you look at some of the documentation of the vehicle, it starts to become very scientifically beautiful because all of that is designed to channel the air in, around, and under the vehicle. Like for example, you look at the front of the car, the way it literally splits the air and runs it in the back of the wheels to cool the brakes, and then out underneath the vehicle, then simultaneously on top of the doors back to the engine. Then while all that's going on underneath the vehicle, it's a completely flat panel carbon fiber at that with a diffuser that's multi-channel at the back so the air leaves the vehicle as efficient as possible. Then there's the active arrow, which is that huge wing in the back, which works in conjunction with the brake to slow the vehicle down as efficiently as possible using the air as well. But wait, there's more. The flying buttresses that form the basis of the conversion from the LT to the LT Spider. And notice it channels the air around the back of the vehicle to provide further downforce. Now that works in conjunction with the change in making it a convertible. And this, there's no additional bracing in going from an LT to an LT Spider. That's why it's only about a hundred pounds difference. The panel itself, I'd love to show you. It's a carbon fiber panel that has no structure. The carbon fiber itself is the structure. It's made up of the carbon fiber panel and then foam, which is kind of like the insulation. And then there's the headliner. But I can't show you that in this car because this one has the optional glass roof. So the idea here is it's only one panel that changes in going from coupe to convertible. And at that, the roof is three inches longer to give it a little bit more space inside the car. So you may be well aware that McLaren segments their production cars. For example, the 570 GT falls under their sports car series, where this falls under their supercar series. Why do I say that? I'm just not a fan of their sports car series. I am much more of a 911 guy. But this, this is an incredible piece of engineering, unlike anything else constructed today or in recent memory. Which brings us to the wish list. And here, I could do something foolish like compare it to a 992 GT3, but that would be a waste of our time. Why? Because all 765 of these that were going to be built were sold before they were built, including this one we were lucky enough to have driven today. So this is the point of the episode where I turn this around to you guys to opine in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV All Word, Moto Man TV All Word, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And with that, I do want to leave you with a little bit of homework. You guys remember our good friend and frequent guest host, Brian Max. He is a complete freak about these things. Well, you need to ping him on his socials because he's got one hell of a story about the history of that engine. Until I see you in the next episode, bish beta.